So everyone, I am delighted uh, that our next amazing uh, uh, woman uh, that we're featuring in International Women's Day is Neha Parikh. And uh, there are some amazing things about Neha that I would just flag. Uh, uh, her amazing heart and ability in her role uh, to really bring out the joy uh, about people, as well as being pretty darn good uh, at, at the process part as well. We've worked together closely. She has an amazing role that she will talk about. But the first time I ever heard her speak, she described how after having, I, I think it was her first child, that she was so excited and so happy to return back to work uh, within, I think it was sort of 18 days. And I always remember thinking, she's a lot tougher than she looks, this one. And so let me hand over to the lovely Neha to describe herself as we talk about challenge on International Women's Day. Hi, Harriet. First of all, I am so excited and delighted to be a part of uh, the series that you're doing. You're always, uh, you know, coming up with the best ideas, and I love that. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I have, I am currently working as the ASEAN HR Director, um, and I have, I'm a mother of two daughters. Um, and yes, I remember our first meeting very, very vividly, where I shared uh, the story. And after that, before leaving for um, office, you stopped by and then we had a little chat and you, you actually uh, boosted my confidence even more. So I've had the privilege of working with you and uh, learning and growing together. I think um, it's, it's been one of the most memorable times. Thank you, Neha. Thank you so much. So we're going to talk about the sort of theme this year for International Women's Day and to sort of share some or one of the challenges that you have personally faced in your life. Sure. So, Harriet, one of the challenges I would say has been just shifting my own mindset, um, you know, as an Indian woman. Uh, who was married and delivered uh, a baby here, there were certain expectations from many members of my family um, that, you know, I will, there is this whole notion that if you are taking care of the child, you should really focus on that. Um, and I believe that too. So just changing that notion and realizing that you can have it all. Uh, but how, how it really changed was, I remember, uh, as I shared with you, um, after, the, after delivering my first newborn, Sarah, I was excited. I felt like, you know, I'm starting a new journey. And yet there was this um, fear that my career has ended. And uh, I, I don't know if it's postpartum this depression or what I was going through, but I was very, very anxious. So I would look at the little baby sleeping there, be happy and yet wonder, you know, I'm not happy. Um, and part of the reason I wasn't happy was because I was not taking care of myself. Uh, in my case, taking care of myself meant keeping myself intellectually challenged and motivated and, you know, doing things besides being a wife, being a mother. Um, and that's part of the reason why after two weeks, I called up IBM and I said, hey, can I, can I just come in for an hour or two just to get the feel of office? And uh, people said, okay, you know what? You don't need to work, you're always welcome. So I landed with cupcakes, uh, just very, very excited to be uh, you know, a new mom. And just uh, being there, we had a different uh, milk delivery and all of that, but I think, I think, uh, I'm seeing a lot of women do that in IBM and outside. So it's nothing unique that happened. But I think my biggest challenge was getting over that mindset and realizing that you have to be happy first to keep your family or anyone else happy. Um, I, um, I remember talking to my mom. She said, you really need to take care of yourself. And I follow this to date, Harriet. I say this without any embarrassment. I pamper myself first before pampering my children. Because when I'm happy, I can truly take care of themselves. So yeah, that's the little story that I would share. And I would just challenge women out there. Um, don't be shy and don't be um, guilty 
about taking care of yourself first. Um, so important. Thank you for that, uh, Neha. And now perhaps one of the hardest questions, not only for you, but many women to answer. Uh, you've achieved so many incredible things. I've seen that firsthand as wife, mother, daughter, uh, HR head of ASEAN for one of the greatest companies in the world. Um, but what would you highlight for us as the achievement or achievements that you are personally most proud of? Yes, Harriet, I would talk about two things that come to mind uh, immediately. And both of them involve something we've done together. Um, so I remember um, when I was working with you as your chief of staff, uh, you know, you had this magazine with you. I don't know if you remember The Economist and it had an article on women in India. And you, you shared it with me and you said, Neha, can you share your perspective? Can you tell me what you think? And I read that and I came back to you and I said, Harriet, I am, you know, it's um, sad to say, but most of it is true. It was all about, you know, um, what, from ranging from violence to women, to the atrocities, to the inequalities. Um, and I said, I feel so handicapped that I can't do anything about it. You know, I'm sitting here in Singapore and I am, um, doing well, and I feel like I'm just not doing anything about it. And I remember you were so perplexed looking at me like, why do you think so? Why can't you do something about it? And, um, and, and that is when we started uh, this, there was this uh, campaign on STEM education for women in India. So, um, and, and I would come into your room every day with some idea, and you would very politely tell me, think bolder. And I would come in and say, Harriet, how about this? How about we do a round table to a panel to other things? And you would keep challenging me. I think you sent me back like the maximum number of times I've been rejected ever in a very nice way. <laughs> but, but you kept saying, can we think bolder? And we got more and more people together. And, you know, the experts, the, the people there, the leaders, we just got everyone and we kept thinking bolder, bigger, until after I think three weeks or four weeks, there was this idea that we could launch a campaign on STEM education for women in India, impacting millions of girls. Um, and, and I flew to India because I felt like, you know, Harriet, I can really make a difference. I was so excited. And uh, while you were leading the project, you helped me really play a big part. And that was the most fulfilling thing I've done. So even now when I, read about all the great things that are happening I just I, I feel like I'm so I'm so excited and glad and um, grateful that I was a part of it you know small but important part of it so that was one I think the second achievement I'm very proud of is um, you know again you and I were talking about me too and we were talking about um, how people and culture are so important in any company and I know IBM, we proud us, pride ourselves in um, you know, a zero tolerance culture when it comes to any kind of harassment. But then you said, hey, how can we make it real? What are you and I doing about it? And I really want anyone who's facing anything to be able to write to me. And I thought that was just not the right idea. I said, Harriet, you know, your inbox will be flooded. There are 120,000 employees. What are you talking about? And you said, no, we can do it. Um, and again, you kept challenging us positively saying, if they cannot write to me, it, it is big enough that it should come to my attention. And we started a speak up, speak out campaign. Um, oh my God, I am so proud of that. Now it's morphed into talk at IBM. And um, you know, we've always had an open door policy, but you made it so real. And I remember talking to employees directly because they were writing to you and you know, you were talking to them and um, you just shifted that culture and um, designing that campaign, launching that campaign at scale for 120,000 employees by far has been such a fulfilling um, achievement. So those would be my talk to Harriet, uh, very, very vivid memories and still things that I am so proud of.